just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Verse 11 is my interest. He says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full or complete. Some versions say complete. That is why Jesus came. He came so that our joy may not just be existing there, but he wants our joy to be complete, to be as it can be. And that is why Christ came. And this theme is also followed by Paul. I want to say number two, joy is very important because pastors, pastors are instructed to lead people to experience joy in the Lord. Hello? I can describe my work and the work of Pastor Kalomoto and all these pastors. Our work is to lead you to lead the church to experience joy in the Lord. I call myself a biblical preacher. And mostly, I, when I make statements, I like supporting them with the Bible. Write somewhere or check in your Bible. 2 Corinthians 1 24. 2 Corinthians 1 24. Paul writes, Not that we lord the over, over, over your faith, but we work with you for your joy. For you stand firm in the faith. Paul says, he's writing to the Corinthians and says, our work is not to lord everything over you. It's not to overburden you with things. But it is to work with you for your joy. And therefore, if Christ came for joy, if Paul was working for the joy of the believers, joy is very important. But as we saw, it's very important. And in fact, in the Philippians 1, 25, 26, Paul wrote again, and he said, this is when he was saying, he wanted to continue being alive. He was waiting to Philippians when he was in the prison, and he's telling them, I want to continue being alive. But he's explaining, why is it that Paul wanted to continue being alive? And he says it, verse 25. Confused of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you for your progress in, in for your progress and the joy in the faith. Hello? Why is it Paul is in the prison? And he wants to be released so that he can go and visit the Philippians again. But why? For their progress in the faith and the joy in the faith, so that they may have plenty cause to glorify or boast in Christ Jesus. In other words, as, they, as, they, as their joy increases, they will continue glorifying Christ. So you see now the connection of joy and God's glory. And therefore our topic, you can say, here is actually where you can see there is always a connection between the glory and the joy. Last week, if you paid attention, Reverend Kyoko Magami said in what we call Westminster Catechism, there is the first question, what is the chief hand of man? What is the main aim of man? And the answer is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Friends, there's a wonderful connection between God's glory and God's joy. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, and our joy. They are all interconnected. Let me, let me try to see whether I can make a point and you try to understand the connection. Let me say this. Let me make this statement. God is most glorified when we are most or when we must rejoice in him. God is most glorified, is most magnified 
is most praised, he is most exalted, hello, when we are most delighted or when we must rejoice in the Lord. And all this does not seem to make sense. Women are sitting with their wives. Let me try to see whether I can use this illustration. And I think in the future people will be sitting like that so that when you use family illustrations, it's easy. Let, let, us, let us try to replace the word glorified with another word. Honored. Sindhi. Honored. Glorified is honored or praised or magnified and enlarged. That's the idea. Now, if you can look at your wife, you agree with, 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 with me that your husband is most honored when you most rejoice in him. Amen. When you are more glad with him. <laughs> As you continue rejoicing in him, you, you rejoice, you are delighted with him. He gets, he feels that he is honored. Why not so sad? The same thing applies to our wives. Your wife is most honored, is most glorified, is most praised when you are more satisfied with her. Yes. That makes sense? Yes. The same thing applies to our God. Yes. Our God is most glorified, is most honored when we are more satisfied with him. When we can enjoy him, when there is no other person you can be enjoyed other than him, he is the best person you can enjoy. Amen. That's the idea here. And therefore, we can be transformed by the joy in the Lord. And the last point in that, I want to say that joy is very important. Why? God answers our prayers so that our joy may be complete. When you pray, and you're asking God to do something for you, the Lord, and He answers that prayer for you, He is doing it so that you can be able to rejoice. John 16, 24. John 16, 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. That is God that we worship. Friends, allow me to explain the word joy a little bit or define it in a way that we can be able to make it simple. In a way that we do it in the class before I come to the application. Number one, I want to say that joy we are talking about it's not just any joy, but it's a Christian joy. We are talking about Christian joy. Joy that is experienced by Christians. Not joy that is experienced when we win a game or when we win the pande. But the joy we are talking about is not that. It's a Christian joy. Now, this Christian joy, I'm going to begin by saying, number one, it's a feeling, not an idea. It's a what? It's a feeling. <laughs> it's an emotion that takes control of your person, of your person, of yourself. Sometimes joy takes immediate control of the situation. Imagine your husband or your boyfriend or your parent or your child has just surprised you with a gift or something that you really longed for. I remember uh, on a TV show, one husband surprised his wife with a new car, which she was longing for. And she was so delighted. She was jumping and hugging him and making all the noise, screaming all over. Joy can take our emotions. And just, it takes our emotions and sometimes it's very hard to control. Number two, the joy I'm talking about it's a movement of the soul. It's a movement of the soul. Which sometimes may be expressed by movement or action of the body. For example, sometimes when you go and give your, your parents something, 
They may just want to, to take you and hug you. Or sometimes they may just open their chest, they spat, and they spat on your hand, they ask, they, they ask God to bless you. So you see, joy sometimes can be expressed through actions and the words of thank you and what have you. The other day, I experienced a high school daughter who was celebrating the father's achievement, academic and other, other achievements. At the same time, she was thanking his dad for being there for the family and being a good role model for them. And I remember she cried, and she came hugging the father. And always she was just crying and shedding tears and saying her father was the best model for her. And how her father was sacrificing for the family. Friends, I learned a lesson from that. One, just a simple lesson. Sometimes it's good to do things to people so that they can express their joy to you. One as well, son. It is also good to, to, to celebrate and enjoy our people when they achieve good things and they celebrate them and rejoice with them and enjoy them. Because the Bible says even rejoice with those who are rejoicing and mourn with those who are mourning. Sometimes we like mourning. But sometimes we also need to, re to rejoice and celebrate with the people when they achieve things. Number three, the joy I'm talking about is a joy that is produced by the Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23, the Bible says there, joy, peace, and love, patience, and the, are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other words, joy is produced by the Holy Spirit. We can talk about joy, but unless we have the Spirit of Christ, unless you are born again, it's very hard to experience this joy. And finally, I want to say this joy. It causes us to see the beauty and the glory of the Lord. This joy causes us to see, understand, appreciate the beauty and the glory of the Lord. When the choir was singing, they were saying, Yes, well, it's in the kifo. You know? Good. And so as we think about how Jesus defeated death, we can also celebrate and enjoy that. Uh, we sang the song, Joy to the World. Joy to the World, the Lord has come. And the last stanza says, Jesus, or oh God, makes nation proof the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love. I want to say this. Brethren, the Holy Spirit helps us to see the wonders of God's love, the glories of Christ's righteousness, the glories of what Christ has done for us. And as we do that, we begin now to appreciate what God has done for us. And as we do that, we are moved to the point of making what we are calling radical actions and behavior. Today, I want us to just illustrate those radical behavior. There are just two of them that we just read about. Stand with me in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24. 44. That is just an illustration. I'm just using that as an illustration of now the effect of the radical joy in the Lord, if you want to understand what I'm saying. The effect of radical joy in the Lord. What are some of those effects? I want to say first, joy is actually a real fuel to life. It energizes life. Many people say, actually, when you love, you continue increasing your days. When you are enjoying, you are increasing your days. Because sadness and anxiety, worries, are not good for you. One of the radical things that you see here in Matthew chapter 13, let me read it, verse 24, 44, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. 
Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he had and buys the field. That is very interesting fact. It's a radical thing. Jesus is saying that when you really meet the Lord, when you really come to terms with what Christ has done to you, it should be like this man who, when he experienced the kingdom of, of heaven, he is like he found a hidden treasure. And when he found that, he went and sold all his properties. And he bought that field where the treasure was. And then, the interesting thing, he doesn't say because of the riches, because of what? But he said because of his joy. Because of his joy. And here, you see that uh, God promises to satisfy true Christians with goodness and joy to the point that it might lead them to sacrifice their wealth and if necessary physical comfort for the purpose of advancing the gospel or serving the church of Christ. Friends, this one we are talking about. When we experience this joy of the Lord, because of what he has done to us. It should encourage us to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's like this man who went and sought all that he had. That's what he says. And he bought that field. Because for him, that field was enough. If everything was taken away, he was not caring so long as he possessed that field. And that is what Jesus is actually telling us and telling his disciples. The radical joy leads us to sacrificial surrender of our resources for the service of God. Hello? What is the command of the To what extent has your commitment to the law led you to total surrender of yourself and your resources for the purpose of serving the Lord. If something was done and we were at summit, I don't know who would stand, even myself. How is my tithe? How is my offering? Does it reflect how the Lord has blessed me? Does it reflect that? How do I sacrifice myself? But Jesus said, you cannot serve the Lord if you don't hate your family either, your wife and your children. He was not saying that you hate them, but the priority sometimes, as we take care of our families, we should also serve the Lord sacrificially. Where you sell, you are thinking about your wealth, your physical comfort, one and suicide. When you wake up very early in the morning to come and practice singing here, you started singing here around six. I remember we talked with you last night. And the choir, English choir, seven o'clock, you're at the back of there, seven thirty, practicing. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. You leave the comfort of your breakfast and the comfort of cooking for your husband, because many of them are, are ladies. And you come here. It's a sacrifice that we make. And it's because we have experienced the joy of the kingdom of God. You are asking me, what is this joy that you have experienced? I can begin mentioning and say, number one, God's love. God's love. He came to die for us because of his love. God's grace, he saved us not because of our works, but because of our faith in Christ Jesus. We are counted righteous, not because we are so good, no, but because of God's grace and God's mercy upon us. And therefore, as we look at Christ on the cross, he took away everything. He took away our sins. We can rejoice and the joy in the Lord. And therefore, the wonders of his love, the wonders of his grace, the wonders of his mercy. As we behold and as we see this, 
we receive joy and this joy should move us to serve the Lord willingly. And number two, Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 2, this joy is the one that enabled Jesus Christ to endure the suffering on the cross. It is that joy that we led that. This is our last passage. Uh, our last passage. Um, Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by the great cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings to the cross. And let us run with the endurance. That's the key word. Let us run with the endurance. The race that is set before us. And how are we going to do those two things? How are we going to weigh, I mean to, to lay aside every weight and every sin? How are we going to run the race with endurance? By looking to Jesus. By looking to Jesus. By imitating Jesus Christ. The founder and the perfecter of our faith. Who again, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Why did Jesus Christ endure the cross? Why did Jesus Christ suffer? It's because there was a joy set before him. Why is Paul laying everything aside? Because of the joy set before us. It is my prayer that as we experience God's joy because of what he has done to us, this will move us to want to serve the Lord sacrificially, examine ourselves. But also, this will move us to want to endure sometimes suffering as we serve the Lord. Because always there will be suffering. Paul counted all his human success and privileges and achievement as rubbish for the sake of Christ. And Paul was always calling people, calling us, Telling us rejoice the Lord and always again I say rejoice. Let your forbearance, let you know, let it be known that you can endure as you rejoice the Lord. May this joy of the Lord enable us to go through the challenges of this world that you are experiencing, that I am experienced by God's grace. Because here we have. Jesus Christ who endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. In fact, I have a theology which is very interesting. Why was Paul saying even for him to die and be with Christ is a much gain? It is because, in fact, we Christians, even when we die, immediately we don't just disappear and go. We go to the presence of Christ, one as we are. And actually we begin our enjoy there. There is a consciousness there. Although we have no body, we have no physical body. As we wait for our bodies, I believe there is a kind of a, a, you know, a kind of consciousness in the presence of Christ. That's why Paul was saying, you know, for me to die is gain, one as we are. And therefore, as Christians, let us be let us be people who reflect on what Christ has done and seek to continue growing in our joy in, as we rejoice in the Lord in everything that he, ha, he, has given, he has given to us. And may we gain the strength to endure the challenges, and, but at the same time also gain the strength to continue serving him faithfully without getting tired. Praise the Lord. Amen. We shall continue from there sometime. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you send Jesus Christ so that our joy may be complete. Thank you because you brought your word to us so that we can be instructed and we can be encouraged on how to grow in our joy. We want to thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. 
who produces and who causes us to have joy in the Lord. And this joy in the Lord, we want to thank you. For it helps us to continue serving you faithfully. It helps us to continue sacrificing for your service. It helps us even to endure hardship as we serve you. And therefore we thank you and we honor you for this day. I want to thank you for brothers and sisters and the Bobomani Church, Bobomani brethren, and I want to commit ourselves before you. May your Holy Spirit and may your word continue educating us and teaching us so that we can appreciate what you have done for us. And as we appreciate that, may our joy be full. May our joy in the Lord be complete so that we can even enjoy our life, even in the midst of challenges that we are facing today. God bless us and bless your church. We pray you all this, trusting and believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.